Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Jeremy from Hazel Tools and I'm your YouTube Snap-on guy. And today we're going to take a good look at the new Apollo D8. So the Apollo D8 was just released within the last few days to my area and it'll be coming out tomorrow in some other areas and next weekend in some following areas. And we'll go ahead and fire this up. You hit the power button right here. And it fires up in less than five seconds and it is ready to go. There we have our menu. And you can see there's five icons on here. We have our scanner function, we have our OBD direct function. Quick lookups, which this is gonna be something new, so some of you guys that have Solus's, whether it's a Solus Pro, Ultra, or Edge, don't have that, or on the Ethos. We have our previous vehicles and data down below, as well as our tools. To get the full function of this whole unit, you actually wanna utilize all five of these. Let's go right into scanner. And for this demonstration, we're going to actually use the demonstration vehicle. And if you've seen our demonstrations before, it's on an older Tahoe. They actually upgraded that. It's now on a 2014 Chevy Tahoe. So because this unit is new, as in it hasn't been registered to a customer yet, it's given me the option that I can either go a live mode or I can go into demo mode. And we want to go into demo mode because we're not hooked up to any vehicle. So like I said, it's a 2014 Chevy Tahoe and we can either use a touch screen or we can use the yes no buttons either one works has a 5.3 in there and then it auto IDs it from there and you can see how fast this is so right from the start we get the code scan now this one has this Tahoe has approximately 24 25 different modules in it when you hit code scan, this is perfect for body shops that are required to do a pre-scan and a post-scan. You hit code scan, it'll scan every module in here and give you a report that you can print off as a pre-scan. And then after you've done your repairs in the body shop, you can do another code scan, print that off as a post-scan and turn that into the insurance company. And I've heard of body shops charging up to $100 per scan. That's $200 per vehicle. We're going to skip the code scan because we want to get into intelligent diagnostics. What the heck is Apollo D8? Let's go into engine so we have our codes menu there's all kinds of stuff here clear codes data display functional tests generic functions troubleshooter troubleshooter is way overlooked I think a lot of people don't realize the power of stuff in troubleshooter we're gonna skip through that and get right to the intelligent diagnostics so in this display this demonstration it's saying that we have two codes, a P0300 and a P0121. And the first one is an engine misfire, the second one is a throttle position sensor. Now what I've been asking my customers is, where do you go from there? What is your next step? You scan a car, it says P0300, what do you do next? Well that's where intelligent diagnostics comes into play. So I've highlighted that one, you can highlight either one, but I'm highlighting that one because that's what I want to work on. And I'm going to hit the engine with the little magnifying glass there. And this gives us our landing page. This is Intelligent Diagnostics landing page. Now this works best when the vehicle is idling and up to temperature. So the first thing that you're gonna get is the most commonly replaced parts for that vehicle with that motor with that code. And as you can see, the different lines here, that tells you we got uh, zero miles up to 200,000 miles. And on the side, we have top repairs from zero repairs to 200 repairs. Where the most commonly replaced parts are and the yellow one happens to be spark plugs now that does not mean go out and replace spark plugs right away that just says more than likely it probably has to do with spark plug the second one the bluish line is replace spark plug wires so i'm sure in some of these cases they did both right but that still doesn't mean we go out and do that right away we're just at the top of the diagnostic landing page for this code on this vehicle. So we're gonna scroll down. The next thing you see is technical service bulletins and there's a one there. Technical service bulletins could be a lot of reading. Intelligent Diagnostics reduces that by only giving you the technical service bulletins that may have something to do with that code on that vehicle. And then this one is a traction control lamp on an engine runs rough. So that's where your misfire comes into play there. So it shows you some information that the manufacturer has put out along with the photographs and how to resolve that. So that's another thing to 
keep in the back of your mind. So now you got spark plugs, plus you have this technical service bulletin. Couple things to keep in mind. We're gonna back up. We end up back at the diagnostics landing page. The next part below that is smart data. So what this does is it gives us code specific data that has to do with this vehicle and this vehicle only with that code and that code only. And it eliminates a ton of other information. Now you're gonna see this beep in just a second here as a misfire gets up to number 24. And did you notice the red flag? There it is. So it actually set a PID trigger as it hit misfire number 24. We can go ahead and put this in a PID list. This shows us all the different things that is going on. This is a custom PID list that's made up just for that code. And you can see cylinder two is having a misfire problem. We can go ahead and hit this and graph it again if you wanna see the graph. Now on top of this, you can still reduce this custom PID list down even further by hitting the checkbox. Here's all of our custom data that they gave us. Well, maybe we don't wanna see all this stuff so we can uncheck some of these and hit the back button. Now them won't show up. Now we have even less. The less PIDs you have going, the faster this machine works. There, hit 24 again. We're gonna back up. Now, all the other information, all the other PIDs are still available. You're not locked out. You can go get all the other stuff you wanted. I'm sure exhaust after treatment data probably didn't have anything to do with this vehicle and this code, and that's why that's not in there, along with the automatic transmission. So it's nice, it reduces all that instead of giving you all the PIDs all at once. Backed up to the home landing page. So we've looked at TSBs, we see there could be a problem with spark plugs, we see there could be something with the traction control. According to this, it's telling me number two is actually misfiring, so we're kind of going back to spark plugs again on this. Any functional test or reset procedures. So as we're going through on a misfire, there may be a couple things that we fix, but that need to be reset. It shows us there's two of them that could apply. Whether they do or not, in your case, we're not sure, but them are offered. All your other functional tests are still available down below. You want to do injector balance, module setups, output control, throttle sweeps. You can still do all that. You're not locked out of anything. It's just telling you the most common things are going to come right up front, right up top to make it easier and faster so you can find that. Now this is awesome right here. Right below functional tests and reset procedures, we have SureTrack real fixes. It shows us the complaint, the cause, and the correction and it says 142 fixed it well you know what you want a second opinion you can go down to the real fixes click on it that first one with 142 fixes is listed right up top here's one another one 109 fixes you can click on that one and it's going to give you the complaint the cause and the correction so you can read through what these other technicians have done to help you repair that vehicle in a timely manner intelligent diagnostics so pretty much what i just showed you is the couple minute demo that i i run past my customers a lot of my customers have snap-on scanners they have the solus modus Verus. some have the zeus um so they're pretty familiar when I walk them through and I say, all right, this is what's different. And that's kind of what I did with the intelligent diagnostics. Is I showed you what's kind of different. But let me walk you through some real world things here that might help you on the floor, you know. So we had the graph up top and it shows you the most common replaced parts. That gives you a starting point, right? So you're coming in with customer complaint, where do I start? So you run on here and it says the most commonly replaced parts are gonna be the spark plugs or the spark plug wires for that code, right? So it gives you a, a good starting point. The next thing when I go down to technical service bulletins, I think this is huge because sometimes there's a reflash on a vehicle that opens some module one millimeter further or one butterfly or whatever, and you could spend hours trying to fix a car and find out it was a factory defect, so to speak, that they need to do something and reflash a module on. That's huge information. If you can save yourself some time not messing around with it when it's something that the factory has to do, you know, all the better for you. 
On top of that, technical service bulletins, they tell us that within two weeks of the manufacturing releasing it, it's in the tool. This updates daily. Now you might have some sort of information system at your shop that offers technical service bulletins, and that's fantastic. You have to have that information. But what this tool is gonna do is it's gonna eliminate what we call the walk of death, right? You scan the code, oh, I got a P0300 on here. Um, let's walk over to the computer, the laptop, the desktop, whatever it is, we'll walk over there, punch it in. Did you ever try Googling 2014 Chevy Tahoe P0300? I bet you come up with a lot of hits, right? You gotta go through all the garage forums, blah, blah, blah. But let's say you have repair information, you plug that in, and you can get your TSBs or whatever, and then while you're there, you check Facebook, and then there's puppies and monkeys, and then you gotta, you know, text somebody. So you you spend all this time away from working on the vehicle, away from making money, when it could be right here, right in front of you, while you're sitting down. You can just flow through the repair process instead of going to the car, going to the computer, go back to the car, go back to the computer time saving. When we get to the code specific data, this one is huge as well because a lot of people don't think it's that important or don't realize how you can make your own custom PID list or they don't want to mess around with it. And really, if I was to grab a, one of my older scanners and hit engine and hit data display and do the demo and stuff, there could be 50, 60 different PIDs on there. So by the time I go through and decide, do I need to see that or do I not need to see that or I think I should, that's time that's spent there again where you could be making money. So having code specific data already set up for you, once again, a time saver. The functional tests and resets, and as I've been showing my customers this week, this unit, you know, we were talking about different things like there's a lot of vehicles now when you replace the batteries, you have to reset it. You have to tell the, the vehicle, hey, I just put a new battery in here so that it doesn't overcharge the new battery. And some of these people are like, yeah, I didn't realize that. We put a battery in a, I think the one guy said a Buick and the customer drove it downtown and it set all kinds of codes because the computer freaked out about it because they didn't know while well, they were able to go through and clear everything out and make everything work. But it's kind of embarrassing when you have comebacks like that. So it's nice to know your repair um, procedures, but also the reset procedures. This is gonna take your game up a notch or two or three or a lot. It's gonna take your game way up because you're getting the information from the pros. These are real fixes that were identified as proven no comeback fixes right on the tool and not only that how they did it what their procedure was so you have your complaint you have your cause and inside the cause it's going to tell you the steps that that technician took to find that to make sure that was the right fix and then you have your correction at the bottom you know and that's where they test it out and make sure everything's good okay let's take a look at this again so we've gone through scanner we got obd direct i'm sure you all know how that works Quick lookups, what the heck is that? We push the button, it gives us oil specs and resets and tire and wheel service information on that vehicle and that vehicle only. So oil specs and resets, you click on that, it'll tell you how many quarts of oil it takes, what type, is it synthetic? Um, it gives you reset procedures, whether or not you have to click your heels or not, or you push a button, or you turn turn signal on four times and flash the lights, or whatever the case may be, that's where that information. Tire and wheel service gets you into TPMS programming. Now you may still have to use a TPMS tool along with that, but it gets you into the relearns on the vehicles that need a scanner to relearn. We have previous vehicles and data, and this one is a uh, brand new unit, has only had two vehicles. Vehicles. We have our demo and then we have my Harley-Davidson because yes, you can scan Harley-Davidson's with these. The last one is tools. This is how you hook it to your computer. We can configure the shortcut key. That's going to be the S right there is the shortcut key. We have our system information and our settings. The Apollo D8 with 18.2. So some of the questions I've gotten on this, and this has only been out for, like I said, I picked them up Sunday at the Tool Show. If you watched my last video, you seen me there we had it. And I didn't do much on it because I wanted to learn. I wanted to take it out to my customers, 
play with it, learn all the ins and outs on it before I informed everybody else and made some mistakes. So some of the questions I've been getting is data plan because you've heard the data plan with the Zeus and that you buy the Zeus, you have to buy a three year data plan to get a three year warranty. You do not have to buy the data plan. However, you will lose the intelligent diagnostics. The intelligent diagnostics comes through your Wi-Fi at your shop onto these tools. And that is updated TSBs daily. It's updated repair information daily. And also on the Zeus, it's three years. On the Apollo, it's two years. You also get them two years of updates as well included with that. So you're not buying the data and having to update the computer every six months. On top of that, you get the update as soon as it is available. So they come with 18.2, so as soon as 18.4 is available, you get it. You don't have to wait for your guy, you don't have to think, how am I gonna budget this? No, it's all part of the package. Now, should you decide, I don't want data, is the machine gonna stop working? No, the machine will work just fine. You just won't have the updated information or the intelligent diagnostics with it. I appreciate you watching my video on the Apollo D8. If you have some questions, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. We'll read through them. The questions that I can answer right away, I'll get back to you right away. The other ones I might have to look up a little bit. As far as pricing goes and availability, you'll have to talk to your own dealer about it, see if they have in some, some incentive programs going on or rebates, stuff like that. So one of the things to consider when purchasing a diagnostic unit is what kind of troubles or what kind of things have I run into in the last 30 days that have held me up or held my business up or held the repair up from getting done in a timely manner. You know, and if you look at back at some of the cars that you've worked on, you know, in the last 30 days or so, where there's some of them that you worked on and they just kicked your butt and it ended up being, you know, you didn't have the right information, this is where the Apollo comes in. <laughs>